happy Monday everyone this is Martha with Nature Niche and uh, I thought this week I'd talk to you about an important skill set that you perhaps haven't acquired yet how to appropriately use a butterfly net I had a fabulous time netting butterflies as part of the mingling with monarchs event out at Chippewa Nature Center um, the people out there, we managed to net all sorts of butterflies and my friend um, Denny Brooks was tagging for the Citizen Scientist Project uh, under Monarch Watch. He's been doing that for decades. And he's the one who taught me how to use a butterfly net. And I thought that uh, he would be an excellent teacher to share those skills with you. So we've got two different nets here, two different sizes. Uh, this is like for small children or specific in there. This will be kind of, you really kind of want to be careful. This is more designed for smaller butterflies. And when we put it out, we sit there and you can kind of, kind of sweep by. This is called sweeping, mm -hmm. come through and around bushes, shrubs, so on and so forth in there. Other one here is a full butterfly in there. After you learn how to use it, use the little one, mm -hmm. the big one you come into and start using that one. Mm -hmm. This works really well. The major thing, the main swing on one of these is if you come down, swoop, and then flip. To help keep the butterfly. This will keep the butterfly <laughs> inside. And we'll set that one down. We take it, we find out where the butterfly is. We're careful about that. And then we can take up, pick it up, mm -hmm. work our way in, and remove it. Okay, we got this guy right here. All right, so we have an adult monarch. Adult monarch. And what we have to do is kind of go in deep in there, bring him out, make sure all four, four wings are secured. And you're avoiding its body as well, yep. pinching the body. Yep, stay away from the body. Great. In there. And sometimes they hang on with their feet, so you just have to be patient while they let go. Yep. Here's another example of that. Special thanks to Ian, an interpretive naturalist with Chippewa Nature Center, who kindly extracted my first monarch caught um, and placed it in a habitat for um, Denny to process as part of his tagging project. If you want to learn more about that process, check out Monday with Martha number 16. Denny does a great demonstration for us there. You have something on the ground. This is something different in there. Take the butterfly, the top part, tail, come down gradually and drop. And then you hope that it flies yep. upwards? Yep. It'll try flying upwards. Usually we try to get a little more peak on it. Like that. Mm -hmm. and then it's going to be moving around it. Mm -hmm. Go down, put on a little panel. Net, mm -hmm. and it will try to fly up from that point. Okay. And then underneath, you have it right there. Great. Having one of these bug jars is really handy for you. Take the bug in there, particularly if you're not going to take it home or do anything with it in there. You just want to look at it. So what you do is you take it, take the jar handle like that. You get your butterfly. Pick it up. Go down, grab it below the butterfly. Come in and start moving your up gradually mm -hmm. until you get your book in there. Once you get it in there, Close it up. This is one way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Take it out somewhere here. Okay. 
and gradually unseal it and get it out of your net. Just like that. Okay. Just for a quick ID. Yep. Okay. And then you can sit there, throw it away. <laughs> okay. Thanks for sharing your techniques, Denny. So once you've uh, practiced those uh, netting techniques and are um, comfortable with getting the butterfly back out of the net, it's time to hit the field and uh, look for butterflies. One of my favorite uh, approaches is to um, look for lots of great nectar plants. This is the field at Chippewa Nature Center full of goldenrods and asters and blue vervain and had some thistles flowering as well. So lots of great plants. They also had patches of common milkweed, which is a host species for monarchs. So they had nectar and host plants. This is a great habitat to look for butterflies. Um, it's important to remember that you should have a sense of what you are looking for and what you might catch in a given place. You certainly don't want to be netting um, rare, threatened, and endangered species. So um, your state wildlife division um, in Michigan, it's Michigan Natural Features Inventory. You can look up what the rare butterflies are. I'll drop that link in the video um, description. But it's important, you can often search at the county level um, so that you understand what rare butterflies you might encounter so that you can avoid handling or netting them because it is illegal to do so without the appropriate permits. Uh, especially in Michigan for species like Carner Blue Butterfly, which is both state and federally listed. Also important to be aware of your surroundings. If you're going to run for um, a butterfly, definitely want to be aware of where topography changes or holes might be or trip hazards. And watch out for um, those uh, thorny plants, uh, prickly plants, things like uh, raspberry and blackberry. You don't want to get that fine butterfly net um, caught in there. But my favorite approach is to search the, the horizon um, and those suitable nectar plants and find a butterfly nectaring and then sneak up from behind and swoop with the net. So this is the second monarch I, I caught uh, for the mingling with monarchs events and uh, that was uh, my approach there. So I hope these tips and techniques help you. And I hope you get out soon to enjoy our beautiful butterflies. Take care and have a good week.